Shocks versus Get Right. Kenny S versus Guardian. Zipnix versus NBK. Thorin versus a moderately overweight NBA Hall of Famer. Esports has seen and been defined by the great duels of stars, roles, figures. But if you want to train in the mode of a duel, then try out Boomio's new flagship training mod, which is part of their service, where instead of going into CSDM to warm up your aim, or instead of playing some sort of a pog or a 10 man before you play an official game with the duels training mod and I'll link a video up here so you can see what it's like what it does is it takes two of you and in the server it throws you into a into a specific position based duel so for example you could have a guy who's dropping down out of the window on mirage into the b site and then the guy who's holding over towards the short area and you take that duel there one of you on either side whoever gets the kill it restarts the mod but it restarts you into a different duel situation and you take these over and over and over and what you're actually able to do is effectively train your aiming your techniques for specific duel scenarios where you do go one-on-one -on -one with another player but in real life scenarios and as a result of being immediately dropped into another one and taking turns at it you're able to get potentially dozens of different dual situations within a minute so this is a really effective interesting and innovative way to train your aim to train the basic components the fundamental aspects of the game without having to play out a whole game or without playing csdm in some unrealistic setting so a team that are going to have to train heavily is the new Dignitas lineup, which is essentially what had been recently referred to by the community largely as Jacob's team, because he was the guy in a stream talking about each player he's picking up and how he was a few months away, from, this is obviously a while back, from getting it all sorted. He's now got the lineup sorted and it's now been announced as the new Dignitas. So we'll go player by player here and kind of give you my thoughts on it. So the basic lineup is Jacob, Makaleli, Fox, Rubino and Peter. Peter being P-I-T-A, the Swedish player who was formerly in a team called Lemon Dogs in CSGO, and he was the coach of NIP and the coach of CLG, and he's now back to being a player again. So we'll go player by player. So we'll start with the man who originally the team was associated with, which is Jacob. So obviously formerly a player from FaZe, and then before that they, the same team was called G2 with different players. And then in the past, he's played in London Conspiracy. Now... He was a guy who was a rising talent in the latter part of 2015 when he was in London Conspiracy, when they were able to finish, I think he was top four at um, DreamHack London. And then when he got to G2, he obviously had the incredible breakout performance where he was an MVP candidate at DreamHack Clusion of Poker. They were literally around from making the final, that G2 team. But as we saw towards the end of the year and then coming into all of 2016, the problem with Jacob was initially he was just up and down. But then as the team got worse in phase, and as they lacked a leader because Dennis had gone to Fnatic, and it wasn't until the latter part of the year that they got Kerrigan, he really, really, without an in-game leader, showed very little signs of being able to kind of be self-sufficient, to figure out his own role, to figure out how to play within a system. And he showed insane lows for someone with his talent level. I don't know that I'd ever seen anyone with his talent level pretty good play at an international level in a team with other good players and show that level of low performance. And the key thing was, it wouldn't just be consistently low performance. He'd have a tournament that was bad, and then the next tournament, he'd have a map where he dropped 28 kills. He'd drop 32 kills. His rifle would look on fire. He'd be hitting those first bullets, and you'd think, this is the guy. This is the talent that we thought was going to come up before. Has he figured it out? Nope. Next game, he could have five kills. He could have six kills. He could have some insanely low ADR. And so he looked like, of everyone in phase, he was the most lost the most confused i realize that sounds a bit tenuous because obviously within that team you had az who looked like he didn't really have his role set but jacob was the one who really suffered from that az could at least keep a decent level of play and in general he wouldn't go super low he would just have average games or he'd have pretty good games in terms of talent to poor performances, Jacob was the worst in phase, and he really, really looked like he had no future in that team carrigan came in carrigan tried it out carrigan couldn't figure out how to use him so he's someone where not only was he lost in terms of identity and role, but it destroyed his confidence. I can tell you from talking to him myself, he's a, he's one of the guys who didn't have any confidence. You know, Rain still thought it was possible. People like Keo had kind of a chip on their shoulder. AZ 
I mean, he, he's a guy who was just waiting for a good in-game leader to come. But no, Jacob was the guy where he, he had no hope even that it was going to get better. And he was almost just thinking, do I wait out the phase contract? Is there a possibility to go elsewhere? He was someone where there was no future for him in terms of that setup of a team. So bringing him in now to this team and him getting to pick the players he's playing with and getting to play with people he's played with before, Makaleli and Fox, getting to play with someone who's presumably a friend of his, Rubino from the same country. I think this is a real nice setup. And he's got an in-game leader who knows how to work in theory with these sorts of players. So I actually think in this team, Jacob is the big question mark, but he's also the player who can do the most. Like if this team works out, Jacob should be the star player and he should be, you know, a top 10, top 15 player in the world if everything goes as you could best expect it to. Now, will that happen? I don't know because it has been really disconcerting how poor the last year was, but now he has an in-game leader. Now he has pieces around him he's played with before that he feels comfortable with and now he has his friend who's a fantastic player who I think actually can elevate his game because they say that they're going to use Rubino in an entry fragging role if they can partner that up with Jacob so Jacob's going in second this is where I could see him really thriving because he's someone who does have sick wumbler aim if he has the confidence if he's in the right role if he knows what he's supposed to do he's not the guy who you, who you want going in entry style but he's just going to cause chaos he's just going to rampage over the site and dominate people it feels like he needs to very well be put within a system where he knows where people are going to be coming from he knows where he's going to be taking those duels and he feels comfortable with the people he's playing with and the calling system so i think this can be his resurrection and he can be kind of delivering on the promise that he showed us in late 2015 but didn't deliver on in 2016 at all and i actually think this is one of the most exciting parts about this team because if it can come together the others don't have to do as much but if they can support Jacob and then he can develop his potential, this is where you'd get a team that legit could be cracking the top 10 in the world. Not going to be at the initial point, obviously. Then you go to Makaleli. So probably the biggest name in this team, all things considered, I realize concerning how mental Fox fans are, he technically is the biggest because we never shut the fuck up about him no matter what he does. But Makaleli is the biggest player in, name in this team because Makaleli has an underrated actual um, international resume. He's been in so many playoff performances in majors throughout the years. 2013, 2014, 2015. Actually, was he in 2014? Yeah, obviously NIP. Yeah. So throughout the years, he's been able to have these playoff performances like I say, around from making the final with G2, he was in the final and was around from, I think, was it one or two rounds? Yeah, it was around from winning a major with NIP. So he's never been the star player of any of these teams. You could make the case maybe of the Clusion of Poker one. But even then, obviously, Jacob was fantastic. And Rain was a very good, talented player. In NIP, he was more of that third star. He was more of the playmaker. And the good thing about this team is they have said... Makaleli is the primary AWP. Now, that is fantastic. I'm really glad about that. Not least because the way they're going to set up the dual AWP, I think, makes a lot of sense. But this guy's at his best when he AWPs. When he has that AWP and he's able to take those aggressive peaks and he's able to play moving around the back and he's very mobile, re-peaking into angles, playing off the streak shooting that he gets where he gets really hot, this is when the guy can be very dangerous. I remember I wrote an article about when he joined NIP. I thought he brought some of the magic back to NIP by making NIP more explosive. Whereas at that point in time, with Pitt, they were more of a stable, but also more of a stagnant team who couldn't really go as high otherwise or needed unnatural performances from Forrest and Gerrit at this point in their careers to do so. So I actually think that this is a really good setup for Makaleli as well. I think that we saw when he tried to give up the AWP and be rifle only. I mean, for example, at Cluj Napoca, he did this. Now, at that one tournament, he was fantastic. He had this game against Mouse Sports in the decider in the group stage where Mouse Sports was the better team. They probably actually should have gone through, but Makaleli almost single-handedly won that series for them. And he had this game on Mirage where he was just winning 1v2, 1v3, 1v1. Insane stuff, all with a rifle. So th yes, that was impressive, but we saw after that... We saw in an IP when they put a rifle in his hands, it wasn't as good. He wasn't the same playmaker because the thing is, you're going to live or die on his playmaking, but that's exactly the benefit is that you can live on it as well. And he can give you those big games and he can be a very explosive playmaker type, type guy. What's good as well is he is paired 
with Fox, and Fox is going to be the secondary AWP. Now, what I like about that is, first and foremost, that doesn't mean the AWP always goes into Fox's hand. That doesn't mean you always save it up and give it to Fox, because Makaleli is the primary AWP. So, first of all, we've got a solid understanding of the economy of where to put the AWPs. Now, if we get a second AWP, or we can afford a second AWP, give it up to Fox, because Fox is going to play the other angles with the AWP. It's going to play information angles. It's going to play stationary anchor angles. It's just going to play a stable style, because that is actually something Fox is capable of. If he's not the primary opera, if he's just a, a, a consistent support opera, he can be stable. We know this. We've seen this. He's not good. I'd still say there's better stable operas, but he's decent, and that's the whole point. And in this team, we're not even asking him to be a top three player in the team. He can be the fourth or the fifth best player in the team, and he can do that job when we consider the level of the other players. It's not like we've got a Nico here and we need even better players. He can do this job, and they could be a top ten team in the world. So I think that Fox is the second robber. I like that setup as well. By all accounts, if you listen throughout his history, this is a guy that has got a good team spirit, that doesn't cause problems in teams, that people like to have around, that is willing to play a more sacrifice a heavy game that is willing to let other people be the stars. That's also a great sign. So I think this is a good setup for Fox as well. In fact, as you're going to go, as we're going to go through this, there's only a few players I've got question marks about in terms of their role. Now, Rubino is one because when Rubino was in some of those past teams, he was a good player, but he's kind of a middle of the pack player in his teams. Then you took him over to Dignitas and initially he was again, he was not a bad third star within that team behind Kirby, behind Config. But the problem is Config hadn't really found his firepower yet. So as a result, Rubino was solid, but that's all he was. He was just a solid player, like slightly above average at the pro level. Now, when you got Tenski out of there and you got in Magix, and now you got Cajun as well. So you got all your firepower and Rubino moved down and took that supportive style. He really did become the Zipniks of that team. He became this really solid support player who worked on the tactical base with MSL to make that work so the stars could do their thing. But from that position has a lot more skill than most support players. And as a result, was able to sometimes have carry games from that, much like Seas did in that sort of mid-2016, early-2016 Na'Vi lineup. And as a result, you had a support player who could play the support role well and was one of the most skilled support players in the world. And I actually thought at the end of the North period, I, it blew my mind that that player, that he left the team because I actually thought he was one of the best supports we had in the entire world. I also think that entire story of him leaving is filled with so much fuckery, you would need some hardcore level investigative journalism to get the bottom of it. Because I know publicly it was stated that like he chose to leave. I asked him, he told me he chose to leave, that he wanted to leave. I know that elsewhere... Some people in the Danish scene were saying he was kicked and that they didn't want him and that wanted AZ. Then you go to an interview that Carrigan did. Carrigan said that they actually asked AZ if he wanted to leave and then he did leave and then they brought in, um, well, obviously Nico eventually, but they were trying out Scream. So all of these stories cannot be true. They are mutually exclusive from three different sides. So there's some fuckery and there's someone lying or someone convincing themselves that this was the real spur where maybe after they'd been told, well, we were thinking about letting you go. And then you're like, oh, actually, I did want to go. Yeah, that is good. I agree. We mutually agreed upon that. So ignoring all that fuckery, my point is, I don't think he should have left. I don't think he should have been kicked. I get that they might have wanted a Danish person in North, but I actually think that he was doing his role to a fantastic degree. I thought he was very good. Now, in this team, it's going to be very interesting because I do think because of his skill, he can play other roles and, and certainly contribute. And in a lineup like this, that isn't trying to be at the level that Dignitas and Northwood, which is trying to crack the top four of the world, he could definitely play more of a star role. And that's the interesting part because they say he's going to play the entry fragging role here. And I know he has good skill. I know he does his job. He's a real soldier who does what the in-game leader wants. So these are all good factors. And the key to me about this lineup is because you got Jacob in his comfortable roles and you got McAuley doing what he wants to do and that's a star rifler and that's a potential star semi-star orpa if Rubino's just a good entry fragger not the best in the world not the best in denmark not even the best player in this team that's enough because we've got our two potential stars here and this is going to be our third star then you've got fox as a supportive player we've got one role left and it can be on the support event who's it going to be it's going to be peter so Peter is someone where he's absolutely going to play a supportive star. If you just look even at his CSGO and his 1.6 career, that's what this guy has done for a long time. And he's been a part of some good to pretty good teams overall. He's going to be an in-game leader. He has actually shown he has a decent understanding of that in CSGO. He, even as a coach, he was trying to take over some of those elements. I mean, 
Obviously, we saw when he was the in-game leader of CLG, they were at their best, actually, in early 2016. That was the team that got to the quarterfinals of MLG Columbus, the major. He was the coach of NIP when they had some decent runs uh, in the latter part of, I think it was latter 2014, early 2015. And he has a lot of experience for a CSGO player because his career goes back in 1.6. And even more key from his time in 1.6 and some periods in CSGO, he's worked with fiery players and fiery personalities. Modi, Delpan, Gox, some of the best 1.6 players of all time. He's worked with some of them in 1.6 as a teammate. He's worked with some of them in Delpan as an in-game leader in CSGO. And that will help him out with Makaleli. Because the thing with Makaleli is he's a player where his talent means he should have had more opportunities. He should be in better teams. He should be in Godsent now. He should be getting a tryout in Fnatic if they want a dedicated AWPA. He should have stayed in Nip, but he didn't. And it wasn't because of his talent. It's because of his personality. It clashed with people. He was too fiery. He was too passionate. He was, in some senses, the Zlatan of Sweden. And that doesn't vibe with the kind of Swedish, laid-back, non-confrontational, cool, chilled kind of... Uh, persona, kind of mentality, psyche that they want to have in a lot of those teams. So I actually think that Peter, especially as someone who's had some kind of a background with this player, I mean, remember, he was with him in the SK Gaming lineup that actually managed to beat Fnatic and help kick Fnatic, like, essentially make Fnatic kick Devil Walk and Schneider. That was the last lineup where they didn't get out of the group stage at Dreamhack Summer. SK Gaming beat them twice. And He's played with Makaleli. He knows Makaleli. I think he can work with him in that sense. He's also someone who did have some early success in CSGO. At DreamHack Bucharest, which was essentially the last tournament of the NIP era before they were displaced by Very Games. NIP won the tournament, but Lemon Dogs finished second. They beat Fnatic, who was essentially the, the four of the players who went on to win the major with Fnatic at the end of the year. No products, admittedly. Then they beat Na'Vi, who just reformed after losing Edward and um, Marklov, and they'd gone and seized in Kibakan. And... They had this team, Lemon Dogs. They went to the final of that tournament, lost to Nip there. It was Delpan, it was Twist, it was Sype, and it was Zelos. Obviously, Sype and Zelos, some people won't know as well, but Delpan, they'll vaguely know. Obviously, a very good 1.6 player. And Twist, famously a star who never wants to play in the top teams. And this was one of his early periods where at least he was playing with friends, but vaguely at a top level. So we've seen him coaching in NIP. We've seen him coaching in CLG. Now, his individual level is my big question mark. I would assume, just as I assumed when Zeus became the in-game leader of immortals just as i've assumed when other players who played a long time ago try to come back i'll assume he's going to be shit i'll assume his level individually will be well below average and he will not do well now that's a big assumption but i have no basis to say otherwise right now but here's the key point that doesn't matter as long as fox isn't terrible as long as fox is stable and does his job they can handle this guy not being that good because they have jacob who has massive potential to be a really good star player has to show it obviously they have makaleli who we know will be streaky and have huge games and have off games we have rubino who's a really consistent player and potentially can do his role to a very good level and be pretty skilled from it. So we've got a lot of firepower. We've got a decent tactical base here. Rubino even's playing kind of a role. He's in the hybrid part of the middle. I think you've got a good balance of roles in this team actually right now. And Peter's going to at least have time to catch his breath, have time to get back in the game. We're going to have time to see if he can do anything in terms of individual level. If he can't, it's all going to come down to what he can do tactically. He knows how to run a team. He knows, in theory, how to use star players in general and how to work with those fiery guys and put them where they want to be. So this is an interesting mix. He's obviously the key to unlocking a lot of these players, but I actually could see it working. Now, this scenario is quite reminiscent of Kingwin, where you got a bunch of international players together. Obviously, three of these players even were in the Kingwin slash G2 slash phase era of when they went through all those different orgs, which is Jacob, Makalele, Fox. So then you got to add in, Rubino has just played most of his career outside of Norway. So again, he's used to working with other people. I mean, admittedly, in those teams, he's having to understand Danish. This one's going to be English. So I think actually the pieces are there for this to work. Everyone in this team can speak English. Everyone in this team can understand English. And I actually think this team can do something. Now, will they? I wouldn't go ahead and bet on it. But I actually think, okay, sure, Jacob and Peter kind of need to turn their careers around to some degree. Peter's got to show us he's got tactics. Jacob's got to show us he can be a legit star. Makaleli and Rubino, I think, will be solid and will do what we expect of them. And knowing what we know so far, I think we should expect Fox can play a stable, 
fourth or fifth best player in the team and just do a support role and be a secondary opera. So I actually think this is a fun team. This is a team that could be upset potential. This is a team that you could slot into a round where a heroic is or those kinds of teams. And you could say, hey, let's see what happens if you put this team in against the right sort of opponent or the stars are going off here. Now, will they be a, a top team? No, it seems pretty unlikely with the pieces they have right now. But they could be a team that could flirt with a top 10 placing. They could have a decent run sometimes. They could maybe get some best of one upsets. And so it's certainly going to be a fun, interesting mix to watch, kind of resetting things in the Kingwin era and starting to get to where they had good players again.